In this video lesson, I'm going to be teaching you about finding distance. It's the very last thing we're talking about in Chapter 5. It's not really a lesson, it's more of an inquiry lab in your workbook. So we're going to uh, go through this. You'll need your golden uh, note sheet that I gave you. And that gold sheet is going to be on page 63. You can fill in the title of just finding distance. There's nothing fancy with this foldable. All you have to do is trim down the sides so that it'll just stick in onto page 63. The great thing about finding distance is that it is applicable to the real world. The actual earth is laid with a uh, latitude and longitude type of coordinate graph um, so that we can find where you are on the world. I know you did some of that in social studies already this year. Also, your phones use that grid-like system and satellites that are in space to help you get around. And you probably have either experienced or used yourself a GPS. Finding distance is all connected to a coordinate grid system and is what we're going to be talking about today. So if we have that same similar grid, it's not longitude or latitude, but we can apply that same thing to a regular coordinate grid that we've been working with, with positive and negatives. So I have here an example of what could symbolize uh, blocks that you would have to walk or drive. So you can see that there's points on the grid, and now our job is going to be today to find how far away each thing is from each other. Um, notice we're not going to be going from like the home to the dance academy with a straight line. We're going to be um, traveling on the streets, so to speak. So uh, we can't just cut across diagonally. Um, and that is something that's on your notes as well. So we're gonna come back to this at the end and actually solve some distance problems. But to give you some context of uh, what those points on a graph could represent places that you would be traveling to. So like I was talking about, we're going to be um, traveling horizontally and vertically today and finding distance only in those directions. We're not going to be diagonal. You can find distance um, of a diagonal, but at this point, we don't need to get into the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is way uh, something that you're going to be doing in middle school. So know that you can find distance of two points on a diagonal, but we're not going to be doing that today. There's two major things that you have to remember, um, and these are tips that you can do besides just counting the spaces or counting the boxes. That is one strategy to take your grid, take your two points, and count how many spaces are in between. What my experience has been and what I've seen students do is that there's oftentimes mistakes counting. You either count too many or too less or you uh, miss a box. So this is another way to check and make sure that you found the right distance. And it involves absolute values. So <clears throat> if uh, you remember, I go back, this grid had different points in different quadrants. We could find um, a distance that is in two different quadrants, or I could have a playground right here, and I could find the distance within the same quadrant. So those are the two different scenarios that you'll have to find distance between two points. The two points could be in the same quadrant, or they could be in two different quadrants. So when they're in the same quadrant, you have to subtract absolute values. So let me tell, show you what I mean by subtracting absolute values. Example one has two points that we're supposed to find the distance of. I'm going to plot them first, show you how to just plain old count, and then show you the absolute value trick. So negative five comma one is right here, and negative one one is here. So you notice these two points exist in quadrant two. 
we have to find the distance between these two points. We could count the spaces and see that they are four units away. If we're not given uh, that each square equals a, a foot or each square equals a mile, we can just call these squares units. So the answer is four units away, but I want to show you that absolute value trick. If we look at these two points, they have the same y value of 1. So I'm going to pay attention to the two numbers that are different. Those, what, those x coordinates is negative 5 and negative 1. If I take the absolute value of each of those numbers, I get 5 and 1. And if I subtract them, I get my answer of 4 units. So I don't just have to count. This is another way to double check, hey, did I do it right? Um, and this would be something that you could do without a coordinate grid as well. So let's try um, example two. It's going to be a different kind of situation with points in two different quadrants. So when finding distance and the points are in two different quadrants, it crosses an axis you have to add the absolute values. And we have a second example here. I'm going to go back to my grid and show you with that picture. So example two, we have two points we need to find the distance between three comma four and three comma negative one. So I'm going to graph those first so we can see that they are indeed in quadrant one and quadrant four. I need to find the distance between these two points. Again, I can just count the spaces. One, two, three, four, five. However, I want to show you that absolute value trick. Looking at the x and y coordinates, I notice that the threes are the same. So I'm going to take the four and the negative one, and I'm going to find the absolute value of each number. I have a 4 and I have a 1, and I'm going to add them now, and that will give me the same answer that I found when I counted of 5 units. So I just have four more examples to close out and practice this way of using absolute value to find distance, and we'll practice this more tomorrow in class. So my third example is a negative 4 comma 5 and 3 comma 5. So I'm going to put that on my grid so I can see it. Negative 4 comma 5. So I need to figure out if I'm going to be adding absolute value or subtracting. And 3 comma 5. So I notice they're in two different quadrants. I can just count and see that they are seven spaces apart, or seven blocks apart, or seven yards apart. But I also can do the absolute value trick. The five is the same, so I don't have to do anything with that. I'm going to take the negative four and the three, the x value, I'm going to take the absolute value of each number. I have four and because and a three and because they're in different quadrants i'm going to add them and i get my seven units let's try example four two comma negative three i'm going to graph that first two comma negative three and five comma negative three this is another example of it being in the same quadrant. So yes, I can see that there's three units apart, but I'm going to go over here and prove that using absolute value. The threes, the negative threes are the same. So I'm going to take my five and my two. They're both positives. And so I'm going to have positive numbers when I take the absolute value. Notice my twos over here, my five is over here. I have to switch them around so that it's five minus two because remember, distance is never negative. So I can switch those around and maneuver the numbers so that I have a positive answer because distance is always positive. Go ahead and try examples five and six on your own and then resume when you're ready to check and see if you got it right.
So negative 3, negative 1 is here. Negative 3, negative 3 is here. This is another situation that is in the same quadrant, quadrant 3. I can see that they're 2 away, but I can also prove it working with negative 1 and negative 3. So negative 1's absolute value is 1, negative 3's absolute value is 3. Because they're in the same quadrant, I need to take the two numbers and subtract them, and my answer is 2 units. Example 6 has a negative 4, negative 5, which is right here, and then we have 5, negative 5, which is all the way over here. So this is an example of, whoa, well, you might count wrong, but um, I'm seeing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so I want to prove that with absolute value. I'm noticing the negative 5 y coordinate is the same, so I'm going to work with my negative 4 and my negative, or sorry, my positive 5. When I take the absolute value of each of those, I get 4 plus 5 because there are two different quadrants, and then that proves my 9 units. So tomorrow I am going to have a few examples for us to practice this skill. It's an inquiry lab, like I said. You are going to be able to count the spaces, but also I'm going to ask that you prove that you're right using absolute value. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great night. Bye.